All right, we're going to move on to looking at a few more examples here of using trig identities and substitution with uh, some indefinite integrals. This one right here, uh, integral of 1 over cos squared 2x. One of the first things hopefully you notice is 1 over cos squared, the reciprocal of cos squared. It's easier if you just write it as secant squared 2x. All right, because then we, number one, don't have that reciprocal to deal with. And number two, secant squared is uh, one that you recognize. Integral of secant squared of something is going to be 10 plus a constant, right? Because derivative of 10 is secant squared. So we're going to use that property in here. Except first we're going to just do a little substitution because we don't just have x, we have 2x. So we're going to say u is 2x, du is 2 dx. And we don't have a 2, so we're going to make this a half du is dx. So I'm going to make this dx into a half du. I'm going to put the half in front. A half integral uh, du. And secant squared of 2x, we're going to make it secant squared of u. All right, so that... Um, 2x became u there, 2x, u, and so on, right? Half du dx. So we're all good now. If we want to evaluate that now, integral of secant squared is tangent plus our constant, 1 half tangent of 2x plus a constant. That's our integral of that thing, right? Not too difficult once you do a few changes there using an identity. Now, you've probably been wondering for some time now uh, why we don't have integrals of just the other four basic trig functions. We've got integral of sine and cosine, but we don't have integral of tangent or any of the other uh, six functions yet. So we're going to look at doing that right now. And the reason we haven't done it yet is because you need substitution to be able to do this. If you're going to find the integral of tangent, you need to, um, you need to use a trig identity here. So we're going to change this to integral of sine over cos dx. And the reason is because we're going to make this. Now i got to decide which thing I'm making into u. Okay, so I'm going to make my little u substitution over here. I have two choices. I could say u is sine x, in which case I'd need this to be cos x dx. But I don't have cos x dx. I have cos x, but it's on the bottom here. I can't say that's cos x dx. That's 1 over cos x dx. If I write this out here, I actually have to write it out as 1 over cos x times sine x dx. So I don't have, I don't have cos x dx because I got the cosine on the bottom. So that one's not going to work. All right. So this is not going to work here. So we want to get rid of that. We want to try something different. My other choice is, instead of uh, doing that, I can make cosine into u here, which is what I'm going to do because that's going to be the one that works. If you make u into cos x, then du is minus sine x dx, or in other words, minus du is sine x dx. So I can change this because I have cos x, and that's going to be my u, and then I have sine x dx right here, and that's going to be changed to minus du here. All right, so I'm going to make this, I'll put the minus in front, minus 1 over u, right, because we changed that to u, and we change this to du because that's what it is, and the minus as well. All right, so we made that integral into that. Let's uh, quickly make some space here because I don't have enough. There we go. That's the beauty of electronic paper. Minus integral of 1 over u. That's that exception, right? That exception to the power rule because it's the derivative of natural logarithm. Ln, except we need absolute value for reasons we've talked about already, plus a constant. Negative ln, absolute value of u. So we need to make it negative ln absolute value, and we're going to put that. We're going to put this back in, right? For what it is, it is cos, right? Negative ln absolute value of cos x. 
plus c. Now you could use some logarithm laws and start changing around this negative logarithm of something or other, but to me that's the simplest thing to do. Leave it at that, all right? Okay, so that I know that looks bizarre, and it's not what you expected because it involves natural logarithm. And people say, why does it involve natural logarithm? It just does because as you're doing this, you end up with a reciprocal in there. You have one over. That's that exception to the power rule that is uh, the integral is natural logarithm. All right. So now you know what tan x, the derivative or the integral of tan x is. Now what I would recommend here is, for the sake of completeness, I wanted to put in here integral of cotangent. You're going to do it in a very similar way to that. I think you should pause the video right now and try it yourself and then check in a minute or two. All right, so pause the video right now. All right, hopefully you had some success trying that. You got to something that seemed like a reasonable answer. If you're going to do this integral of cotangent, we change it to cosine over sine using trig identities. And that's going to allow us to write it as 1 over sine. Don't forget the integral sine. 1 over sine times cos x dx. And this is where we're going to decide what we're going to make into our u. u is going to be u is going to be, oh it sounds weird, du is cos x dx then, and we can make those changes, right? Cos x dx is du, cos x dx, du, and then we also have our sine x is going to be u. So we got 1 over u integral there, All right? Now, not much space I have here. Let's uh, make a bit more to work with, so I can write it underneath there. Um, this is going to be ln absolute value of u plus that. Or in other words, ln absolute value of what we had u, which was sine x plus a constant. All right? That's what that integral is. Like it or not, it involves natural logarithms. All right? Now in the next video for this section, we are going to look at integral of the last two basic trig functions, integral of secant x and integral of cosecant x, all right, so that we can have integrals of all those six basic things.